I call Sir William CEO. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, for the opportunity to take a call on this important bill. I want to convey to the House uh, Labour's acknowledgement and appreciation to the hundreds of individuals uh, of, who submitted the people from the four corners of the Auckland region, the many community organisations, businesses, small and large, environmental groups, churches, who all gave of their time, energy to prepare and make submissions to the Auckland Governance Legislative Select Committee. I also want to acknowledge the community board chairs and their members, the councillors and the mayors who submitted on behalf of the eight local body authorities uh, on behalf of their people whose right to exist was snuffed out by the government's reorganisation bill earlier, which was ran through an urgency. I acknowledge also, like others, the parliamentary services staff who worked under extreme pressure that the government put them under to rush the whole process through. Labour has consistently advocated for the reform of Auckland's governance structures, but Labour opposes the government's Auckland Council Bill. Labour supports the general belief that Auckland is so important to the future of Aotearoa New Zealand that we have fought every inch of the way to ensure that Aucklanders have a say in the process and that we get the structure right. We have fought tooth and nail to get the structure right and ensure Auckland's future is assured as an internationally competitive, dynamic, socially inclusive city and region. After all, as a people, Auckland is home to 1.4 million people, over 180 different ethnic groups. It has the highest Māori population, the highest Pacific population. It also has the highest Asian population, where 70% of new migrants settle in this region, and with a third of all people who call Auckland their home are born overseas. I would ask, will the structure enable us to be united in our diversity as the Auckland region? I don't think so, Mr. Speaker. As an economy, Auckland is regarded as our nation's economic powerhouse, the fastest growing region. A third of the nation's workforce reside in the Auckland region, 38% of businesses, business enterprise based in Auckland. Auckland provides 35% of our nation's jobs, 70% of imports and 40% of exports come through Auckland. And where my favourite place uh, Māngere is known as the gateway where Aotearoa New Zealand touches the rest of the world. Will this structure enable us to release the full potential of that economic powerhouse? I don't think so. Labour opposes the government's bill setting up the super city structure as this structure has become more undemocratic and still delivers our largest city a flawed governance model. But much needed progress has sadly been compromised by bad decisions, poor process, including a sham consultation process and a lack of vision. After Mr. Key made promises before the election that once the Royal Commission made their views known that he would consult with Aucklanders, the government introduced the process uh, of reorganising Auckland in urgency. There were many submitters from the four corners of the Auckland region that conveyed to the Select Committee their outrage at the hasty and rushed manner in which the government was advancing this significant change to local government as we know it today. The result is an unbalanced model which centralises power in the hands of a privileged few. It is highly unlikely to achieve the Royal Commission's goal of increasing community engagement in Auckland's local governance. National and ACT have made a mockery of the democratic process, Mr Speaker. When the Royal Commission consulted with 3,500 Aucklanders and after 18 months of that work, they released a comprehensive report which was sustain with substantial amendments. Government took two weeks to come up with a response, no consultation whatsoever with Aucklanders who had the right to be consulted on the select committee process that was undertaken by the government. On the, the, consult the, the public only were consulted on this bill after 
the public pressured them to do so. But, what's, but whilst the Select Committee took the time to reach out to the main centres of the Auckland region, and while the Chairman did a good job in facilitating these public submission sessions, many submitters felt they weren't heard or the government wasn't listening. Many individuals felt they weren't given enough time. I'll give you some example. The boundary changes, north and south, yes or no. Many submitters, right from the beginning, opposed the government's original submission. What we, what we have now, sir, is an 11th hour, albeit it's a welcome change, but at the 11th hour, they've decided to make this change. But right from the beginning, despite the overwhelming evidence from Rodney, from, from Franklin, they weren't prepared to budge. They would say things like they were listening, but in actual reality, they weren't. Where is the mana-enhancing relationship with Māori? Where are the Māori seats in a, in a region where the highest proportion of Māori reside in Auckland? Where is it? When we talk about mana-enhancing, whose mana was really enhanced as a result of this process? Certainly not Māori, certainly not Pacific, certainly not the diversity that is in that region. It is sad, Mr Speaker, that after listening to the overwhelming evidence of people who supported having Māori seats in the new super city, that the government decided otherwise. There were many submitters, and I would say the significant proportion of people who supported having Māori seats were Pākehā. Some of them talked about being an inclusive region. Some of them talked about ensuring that we did the right thing for our treaty partners. Many of them did not know how to be able to structure this with Māori seats, whether it be two, three or five representatives. But the overwhelming support was that this was a new era, a new opportunity for this government if it really had the vision to benefit all the people in the Auckland region that they would be able to provide Māori seats. They did not. We come to Pacific. The Royal Commission, sir, outline an inclusive structure for the Auckland region, for the super city. It noted that it needed to be the new, those in power needed to consider the participation of Pacific as well as Asian communities. Every single submitter from the Pacific community, whether it was an individual submitter or whether it came from the Manukau Pacific Island advisory body or the Waitakere advisory body or Auckland Central or North Shore, every single one, sir, supported having Māori seats. But they also said that there was a need for this government to recognise that Pacific needed to be a part of that. And the best starting point was where things are, which was strongly recommended by the Royal Commission's report. So, whilst the government, sir, just final thing before Mr Tauhenari gets on his feet. While the, the government does not want Pacific communities uh, participating in this city, yeah, I would ask my friend across the chamber there, Pesta Samlotu Inga, what is the Pacific community asking you, Pista? And if you are really listening, unlike many of your colleagues, if you are listening to what the public is saying, are you prepared to support the supplementary order paper that Labour will be introducing at a later stage to ensure that there is Pacific and Asian advisory bodies in this new structure? Yes, I'm asking you, Mr Henare, will you be supporting the supplementary order papers that the opposition will be introducing to having Māori seats in this new struggle. Be visionary. Be visionary. Provide leadership, good leadership, strong leadership. If you can do that, you would be able to support the supplementary order papers that introduces an inclusive structure for an inclusive Auckland so that we will be able to receive the benefits of a stronger region, a stronger people in the Auckland region. Finally, Mr Speaker, whilst, we, whilst there is, we're supporting having empowered local boards, 
and, and we credit the public submission for that. And whilst we're supporting ward councillors, my colleagues and I, sir, feel that the government still has it wrong. The member still that has it wrong. Time has expired.